Hey, this is Dellen Gray on Musicians and Bars Getting Gear. But today I'm actually a musician in a garage studio getting tea, so I hope it doesn't confuse you too much. Thank you so much to the show for having me. I'm super stoked to be sharing some of my musical process with you. So uh, getting straight into it, I guess, my latest single is called Listen to the Thunder. And uh, you should go listen to it. You should definitely go listen to it. Let me know what you think. Um, I'll, uh, I'll mention my social media a little bit later, but I'd love to know if you have any feedback on it um, and if it makes you headbang as hard as it makes me. Uh, it's, uh, it's a song that I actually wrote in 2017, so it's been a little while. Um, I was 17 years old, I'm now 21 is crazy uh but little 17 year old me was clearly going through some stuff and decided that um you know i needed to write some um music that was actually reflecting the way i was feeling so a little bit of backstory i started writing when i was um really young my dad's a musician so um you know typical artist story uh nothing new here but my dad's fantastic i grew up on um, his music just him playing around the house and whatever else and and i started taking it seriously when i was about 10 11 wrote like my first legitimate song um and then kind of got stuck in this indie pop world um you know i was in high school at the time when um i started taking it really really seriously um i was writing all the time taught myself how to play guitar was taking piano lessons um just really um needed to be in it at all times so middle of high school didn't really want to uh, ruffle any feathers i wanted people to like me i wanted to maintain a status that uh you know kept me alive <laughs> so um and mentally stable of course so I didn't want to be the kid that was writing music that no one wanted to listen to. I wanted to be the the kid that, uh, you know, everyone was impressed by. Um, little fact to know about me is that I'm definitely a kiss ass. <laughs> I really like when people like me um, to a fault, definitely to a fault. And it's something that I, I have had to uh, face more so in 2020 than, than ever in my life. But um, that's a little something you should know about me is that validation is definitely something that I I can appreciate. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going off track because this stuff makes me feel uncomfortable and I don't really know what I should or shouldn't be sharing. But um, getting back to the actual song, I wrote it when I was 17, middle of high school or just kind of tail end of high school. I was actually graduating that year. Um, and I just kind of said, screw it, you know, you can, not that you will, but uh, some of my friends, if you talk to them, would contest that I just kind of shut off that year in high school. I was a total, utter loner. Like, I just didn't want to be around anyone. Um, I was really going through it. Just, I just wanted to get out as fast as possible, um, as I'm sure a lot of people do in high school. But, um, I wrote this song and it came out of nowhere, really. I, uh, I started working with the producer in, in 2016. So just a few months before I wrote this song and he took a listen to the stuff that I was writing. And he's like, look, like it's good, but I don't actually think I'm hearing you. And uh, I want to hear you. So let's take some time to like dissect all of this and figure out where you're actually coming from tell me what you actually want to be saying and he was great really really great coach in that in that way um so we did and he said listen to some stuff i have some songs i want you to listen to included uh emily haynes knives don't have your back um uh oh my goodness white zombie um a bunch of other bands that i can't think of at the moment uh because i feel like i'm on the spot <laughs> remember anything but um yeah I listened to a bunch of really cool bands uh that I hadn't paid much attention to before and came back with with a slew of songs long story short I was working on one of these songs um in my studio which at the time was in my house and um was so stuck on it just couldn't get anywhere with it it was really frustrating and um you know, I, I decided it was time for lunch, so went upstairs, made myself a sandwich, and it was 
pouring rain. Like it was a really gross day outside pouring and this storm started. And I was sitting at my counter just eating quietly and I was alone in my house and just thought to myself, just like, just listen to that thunder. And it sounds super cheesy when I say it, but it was really cool when it happened in my head, okay? <laughs> so I'm listening to the thunder and I'm like, oh my God, that would be such a cool song. Like that would be such a cool song. And honestly, I I had been listening to the Imagine Dragons Thunder song um, for quite a while at that point and was like, I want something similar to that, but I, I obviously need to put my own twist on it, but wow. That was a cool song. They used thunder and I'm living in a thunderstorm right now and something needs to come out. Maybe it's the song that I was working on before, but I think this is something else. So sitting at the counter and I start smashing it. Like I'm going for it. I'm not a drummer. <laughs> I'm not a percussionist of any kind. And I started smashing my um, counter trying to get like the beat that I wanted. I wanted it to be like theatrical. I wanted drama. Um, and I knew that I needed the chorus to be listen to the thunder. Da, 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 ka, da, 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 ka. And so I'm doing this and I, in 20 minutes, I wrote the song and I was mumbling the lyrics, like didn't really have lyrics at the time, but, um, was mumbling these things that sounded like the lyrics that are actually the ones now which was really cool. So I run downstairs to the studio and uh, I just close my other project, open up a new one and I put this, oh my gosh, this horrible drum track together. I'm talking just, it was all over the place. It was all over the place. I don't know how I thought that was the way to do it, um, but it was so bad, it was horrible. So I put that together and then I start singing. I play it out loud because I didn't know, I didn't understand how to record myself on the mic. Don't even ask. I, I still have trouble um, using my tech, but I didn't know how to record myself. So I just played it out loud and then recorded myself on my phone. And within probably another 20 minutes, I had the song down and I recorded it, send it to my producer and said, hey, drum track vocals, this is a song we need to do. Went into the studio that weekend and uh, we just built it out. It was absolutely incredible. That whole process was so cool. I don't think I have any funny stories to tell about it other than like I almost broke my counter in the process. But um, it was so cool. He, so producer that I was working with at the time, his name is Justin Abedin. And, and he, honestly, he's a musical genius. Like the man... Um, is fantastic and brought so much to the music that we worked on together specifically this song the guitars in that song are all credit to him um he really just pulled out everything that i was envisioning for it and more um and so that collaboration was beautiful absolutely beautiful and to this day it's it's probably i'm not gonna say my favorite song because i don't want the others to hear it but um definitely up there um i love thrashing around to it on stage. The guys that I play with love playing it. It just changes the energy in the room. Um, the amount of people that I've sent it to and heard back, oh my God, this is a James Bond song, is actually ridiculous. People that I don't know, I did this festival, this uh, virtual festival in uh, in the summer, and it was a bunch of people in, in the UK. And uh, I got quite a few messages probably like a handful more of messages from from listeners and um uh the majority of them were asking me if i wrote this to be a james bond song or they'd say oh my gosh this is so cool i could totally hear it as a james bond soundtrack so that is so cool and that is why also partially why i love this song because i feel like i definitely accomplished that drama that theatrical aspect that i was looking for when i was writing it so yeah, listen to the thunder, go listen. It's on Spotify, Google Play, YouTube. I have a really cool video actually before I move on to other things um, and take up more of your time. Uh, quickly just to mention something about the video and this is kind of where the funny stories are, I guess. I mean, they're kind of ridiculous more so than anything. Um, my parents brought uh, bought a foreclosed house and 
I actually don't know how to describe it um, in any way other than it was about to fall down. Um, you go in and the walls are falling apart and the floors are just disgusting. The roof is exposed. Like it was, it was gross, so gross in there. Um, but I actually filmed a video for Battle, my previous single, and then decided that it would be a great place for Listen to the Thunder as well. So. I dragged my poor father and my poor bo boyfriend to this house and I say poor but they were super into it it was it was gonna be great and honestly we probably took two hours to do it it was pretty cold um no heating barely there's electricity in certain parts of the house so we played around with a bunch of stuff I got in a bathtub um not the way you think uh fully clothed with a lamp one of the coolest pics I think I've ever taken <laughs> Uh, people will probably think I'm just ridiculous for it, but that was a really cool process. Um, also speaks to my impatience because I don't like taking full days to, to put videos together. I'd rather spend more time editing and just get a bunch of like random stuff together. Um, so anyone who's into film, I do apologize if you watch this video because it definitely, um, will not live up to your standards, but I do hope you enjoy it anyways. Anyways, um, we recorded this. I was so worried. I almost broke a banister at one point. Um, we had this really dingy basement. You'll see in some parts I'm behind a staircase. Uh, I fell down those stairs a couple times. Um, uh, fell into some dust. I don't even know. It may have... I don't know what it was that I fell into, but it was pretty gross. Stayed on my clothes for a couple days. I had to wash them a couple times. Um, overall the process was awesome. We laughed. I think my boyfriend and my dad took more videos of like themselves goofing off than, than of me. So it was a really fun day and it totally just tied off this song the way I needed it to be tied off or, or wanted it to be tied off, I guess. Um, super hectic. Uh, there's a seizure warning at the beginning of the video in case anyone is uh, sensitive to that kind of stuff. Um, but it's cool. So you should check it out. I know I said there was funny stories and stuff, but as I was saying it, I don't think there's anything really funny worth me um, mentioning other than the fact that we filmed this, this video in a house that was falling apart. <laughs> so that's that. Um, I guess I'll move on to talking about um, my favorite people. One of my favorite people in this whole world um, and I only met recently, as in a couple years ago now, I guess, um, is the magnificent Biff Naked. I'm telling you, this woman is so incredible. I, I actually, I'm speechless anytime I try to talk about her. I've had a couple of questions about, you know, what it's like to be managed by her because she and, and her manager, Peter Carroll, who's also brilliant, um, are managing me currently. And, um, you know, I'm always asked, about uh the kind of person she is and how if it's cool to work with her and my answer is yes to everything like just yes she's incredible yes i learned so much from her um yes i want nothing more than to tour with her uh yes i want to be her best friend <laughs> yes i'm inspired just yes um point blank biff, Na biff naked is incredible and she's one of my favorite favorite people on this planet um just so kind and generous and um yeah she's she's a force to be reckoned with um so she's way up there uh another one of my favorite people and it will not be reciprocated but uh <laughs> i met steve lillywhite producer of uh u2 um and a bunch of other talking heads and and a slew of others oh my gosh um i met him at cmw in 2018 I think 2017 and I had actually been told not to go to CMW um just the people that I was working with at the time were like oh like I think we should probably focus your efforts on other things I was like no no no, I really want to go Steve Lillywhite's gonna be there and literally all I wanted to do was sit in on his um on his talk and he was just talking about production I'm not a producer it really like the talk was incredible to hear to see him in front of me, my dad is a huge YouTube fan, and I have uh, a tongue baby in YouTube and October on uh, on my windowsill right now, uh, vinyls, and uh, just to back up the fact that we're huge YouTube fans in this house. So household name Steve Lillywhite, I got to see in person, incredible. Little did I know 
he was hosting a mentor booth. So, um, uh, I guess people at the CMW conference, apologies, I don't remember what the term is, delegates maybe, I don't know, conference people, um, were allowed to go talk to him after his, uh, his chat. And I was like, oh my god no way i had no idea he was gonna do this so little me i get up i put my bag on and i beeline for that table i was like oh my god it was in a whole other room than the front of this like this uh conference center i guess so i'm running i'm running i'm running i'm behind this the first guy who gets there and we can argue about who got there first but i kindly <laughs> let him go in front of me and steve lillywhite comes down the hall, everyone's like, oh my god, oh my god, shake my hand, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I just saw you, can you listen to this, can you do that, it was crazy, and so I'm standing in this line, I'm like, oh my god, keep your cool, keep your cool, I had these like space buns in my head, one of them was, oh my god, it was awful, I looked like a complete wreck, anyways, I'm waiting in this line, and Steve is with the guy who's in front of me, and he's, uh, uh, listening, he ends up listening to this guy's song, and I was like, no freaking way like you're actually listening okay holy shit so sorry i don't know if i'm allowed to swear but anyways so i get on my phone and uh i pull up my soundcloud and i have all of my tracks on there all my demo tracks and i was like oh, which one will he like listen to the thunder so i chose listen to the thunder and i get up to see him i'm shaking hi uh, mr lily white <laughs> like little me freaking um mr lily white it is such uh, an honor to meet you. I'm like, you're, an, you're a household name. Um, my father's such a huge fan. I'm such a huge fan. Like, I don't actually know what to say to you right now. Will you listen to my song? And he just kind of smiled and he's like, yeah, of course. I don't know if he called me darling or hun or something. It was, it was very British of him. I should know because my mother's British, but, um, he was, he called me something and it just made my heart flutter and my stomach like sink. It was ridiculous. I was, I've never been starstruck like that. Um, and so he listened to the song, gave me some pointers and he said, Hey, actually, how about I, uh, um, here's my, my email. Uh, send me the song and, and we can keep talking and I almost died right then and there and so I was like, oh my god can I take a picture with you and he said yeah do you want to actually call your dad I'll say hi to him so I'm on the phone calling my dad doesn't answer like the one time I need my dad to answer he didn't answer but anyways long story short Steve Lily and I are pretty much best friends Lily White and I are uh, pretty much best friends he doesn't know it but but I do anyways um those are two of my favorite people <laughs> Other people would be uh, Chris McFarlane and Kyle T um, and Chad Davis. They are my band. They're the guys that I work with um, or that I play with, and I love them to death. They are like a little family outside of family, and um, I couldn't be more lucky to, to have them, to call them my band. So uh, I'll talk a little bit about my band now. I am um, a, I don't even know, single artist. <laughs> I don't know if that's how you say it. But Dellen Gray is just me. Um, however, I started playing with a band uh, back in 2017 when we wrote this stuff. And uh, I wanted to start playing live. Um, my producer got, at the time, got a bunch of guys together. And I honestly haven't looked back. Like, these guys are just incredible. Um, Chris McFarlane, Kyle T, and Chad Davis. And um, they are really mostly involved when it comes to performance. So we'll rehearse together, we'll perform. Um, Kyle and Chris have been very much involved in um, recent musical development. So they've actually been supporting from a production standpoint, um, which is really, really cool. Uh, so that's kind of how our relationship has developed recently. Uh, but for the most part, when it comes to actual, like, brand management and social media and uh, whatever else, the whole other full-time job that comes with being an artist, uh, I do manage that myself. So, little shameless plug, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, I don't even know where else, a bunch of other, just type in Dellen Gray in Google, D-E-L-Y-N-G-R-E-Y. And you'll find me somewhere. Um, all of my socials are linked to one another. I am most um, active on Instagram. 
so you should check that out. But um, anyways, I do manage all of that stuff. Um, I'm getting <laughs> my boyfriend and one of my friends involved uh, in a little bit because it is getting quite overwhelming and I'm not having a lot of time to be creative. Which is the next thing I'll go right into. I like I don't have any seamless segues, but um, I guess I can talk a little bit about uh, my instruments. Um, it's really <laughs> nothing impressive. I actually I'm still using my first guitar that I bought. It's a Simon and Patrick Luthier um, acoustic guitar. Love her to death. Oh my gosh, custom left-handed because I'm left-handed. Um, which makes me feel so incredible. Anytime I see videos of Kurt Cobain playing or Paul McCartney, even Justin Bieber, I'm like, yes, I made it. I'm part of the team. So uh, I use that bad bad girl. I was going to say bad boy, but I just said she. So uh, I use that bad girl uh, every single performance. I try to practice as much as I can, or I do practice as much as I can. I don't try. Um, I practice as much as I can. Really, I'm still a beginner, barely intermediate. I play uh, pretty straightforward chord progressions and whatnot, but it does get me to where I need to be in terms of writing and um, whatever else. I would like to uh, kind of expand my um, my musical knowledge and my, my playing capabilities. That will happen when, when I do have a little bit more time. I'm working full-time for a tech company at the moment, so... Um, time is uh is pretty strapped um especially when you're managing social media everything ends up getting swallowed up by that so creative time i'd like to spend more time uh developing my skills if you will and then piano has my heart honestly piano is my first instrument and it's probably the one i feel like i connect with the most um and i just have a yamaha keyboard here in the studio um i try to play most mornings and uh it just it's such a therapeutic time. Um, really, uh, yeah, me and my piano have, have a bond. I took her on tour with Biff Naked, actually. Um, played a few shows with Biff um, before everything got shut down for COVID in 2020. And uh, yeah, we've been through it. She, she did me good. So um, that was cool. I did, however, kind of funny story, drop my acoustic guitar on stage Luckily, it was during sound check, but then I made a little joke about it in uh, during the performance because it almost happened again. But um, ridiculous me, I use a shoelace to tie my strap on, and um, I didn't tie it enough. I didn't tie it tight enough, and the whole guitar just came crashing down on the ground. I thought my dad was going to kill me. <laughs> I think I did this in front of Biff and, and uh, Snake as well, which was ridiculous. Um, anyways, so that was, that was cool. My poor guitar gets bashed up a little bit, but I, I do love both my piano and guitar. I just, you know, show it in very different ways. Um, so that's a little bit of gear gab. Nothing impressive. I don't really use pedals. I'm not a huge, uh, um, electric guitar gal. Would really like to be. I like posing with them, but, uh, new, like, next on the list is, uh, is playing them proficiently. So that will happen. Stay tuned. Um, so I guess one of the last things I'll talk about um, is uh, why I think music is such a great communicator. Um, I did think about this question quite a bit actually over the past week or so and still haven't come up with an answer that I think um, hits everything I want to say. Um, Music brings people together and we're living currently in a very disconnected world, even though social media is social. Um, I think we're more disconnected than ever. And having been working with a tech company that kind of tailors to kids um, for the past four years, I'm seeing it more now than ever. Um, you know, kids, adults, um, whoever you are, we're disconnected because of our technology. And music is kind of this beautiful remedy that still brings us together. Um, and it's really unfortunate that we had to uh, cancel all live shows because that was a time where, you know, we just... You're in a room with beautiful people that are in awe of the same artist as you for such different reasons like you're all there for for different reasons um but you share this one thing in common and i think that's really beautiful and it's nothing that anyone has never said um 
but that's kind of why I think it's such a great communicator because it manages to bring people of different backgrounds um, together. And we don't think about that when we're moshing. <laughs> and, like, you don't. You really don't. I went to Oceaga in the summer and it was one of my first, I, yeah, one of my first um, music festivals that I've been to. I'm not a very big crowd person. I very much like being on the other side of it on stage. Um, crowds just freak me out a little bit. Uh, but it was just incredible. There was so much love and the energy and... I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm really, I'm trying to say something, but I can't even say it. It's just, I, it's beautiful that music can bring so many different people together. That's pretty much what I'm, what I'm getting at. Um, yeah, you can be of a completely different background and understand someone just because you like the same artist or because you like the same song. Um, it's something that you get to share. It's like food. <laughs> You share it with your family, your friends, and uh, it brings you all closer together. So it's pretty beautiful. Um, it's a beautiful thing to be a part of as well. Um, I feel very blessed to be able to um, express myself through music. It definitely makes me a better communicator because I um, learn a lot of things about myself in the process of writing songs. And I think people learn a lot more about me um, upon listening to my tracks. So that's that. I've taken up so much time. <laughs> I can't stop talking. It's kind of ridiculous. Once I get going, just watch out. She's never going to stop. So my dad is probably the biggest influence I have musically. Um, I talked a little bit about him at the beginning and um, yeah, grew up in a super musical household. My parents are both my biggest fans and um, uh, yeah, I, I can't say enough about them, but somehow I'm speechless right now as per the rest of these um, these questions and answers. Uh, but um, yeah, my parents just have been cheerleaders throughout the past several years and it's just been really incredible uh, to, to be able to do what I love and have the people that I love um, push me to be better. So that's a little bit about my dad, I guess. Uh, Band-wise, who was I listening to? Who do, who do I currently listen to? Um, it's It sounds so cliche, and I hate myself for it, but I am a Nirvana girl. I am. I really am, and I tried really hard not to wear... I, I purposely didn't wear my Nirvana hoodie because that's pretty much all I've been living in for the past eight months. Um, but I'm a Nirvana girl. Kurt Cobain blows my mind. Dave Grohl, Chris, like the three of them are incredible. And, and not to discount for the other members of Nirvana um, before Dave Grohl either. But um, that band definitely uh, was the voice was the voice in my head telling me that I needed to, to write music that I wanted to write. It wasn't even like, OK, write music like Nirvana. It was OK you're connecting with this music on a whole other level and you're not even connecting with your own this way. So there's something wrong. You should, you should change something. Um, so Nirvana was, was kind of that for me still is to this day. Like one of my favorite songs is something in the way. And whenever that song comes on, I just either I cry <laughs> or I want to go for a run, work out really hard. Like it's, it's kind of a mess of things, but, um, uh, Nirvana is just it for me, man. Um, Audio Slave, Chris Cornell is just incredible. Eddie Vedder is incredible. Janis Joplin, I do want to shout out the incredible women that I've listened to as well. Amy Winehouse is a huge, huge influence. Um, Emily Haynes, Gwen Stefani is freaking bad as hell. Uh, I, I'm trying to think of other people. I don't want to force it because that's who's coming at the time. Oh, Pink. Pink was really big for me when I was a teenage girl. She was huge um, in kind of helping me find my confidence I guess my bad girl side just just yeah my confidence and the fighter in me I guess uh pink definitely helped get that out um Jeff Buckley <laughs> anyways I'm gonna stop listing people because we're just gonna get into some weird stuff I have very weird relationships with these with these artists um anyways love them all and they're all they all play a part in in what 
my music is um, and the way I approach my writing, the way I um, kind of approach music as a whole. I really, I see music as being something that I need to do and I know that a lot of artists say this and it's not because they're um, trying to sound cool or anything. It really is a thing that you need to do. Like it, you're so passionate about it. It just has to be a part of your life. Like I, I couldn't live without music. I couldn't live without creating music. Um, and I think that's an important um, differenti differentiation to make. Like I'm not saying um, I couldn't live without listening to music ever. I'm, I can't live without writing, without playing, without singing. Um, I really can't. It scares me to think of uh, not being able to do that. So trying to take advantage of it. Anyways, here I go again on more tangents. Gosh. Um, yeah, so those are favorite bands, uh, people, singers, artists, whatever you want to call them. Those are people that have uh, played a huge role in me um, building my sound, um, building or honing my craft, I guess. Um, I'm excited to see how this sound evolves. Uh, the next tracks are definitely can live within the same vein as Listen to the Thunder. It's all still pretty rock driven. Um, that's just kind of where I'm sitting at the moment. I, yeah, I wouldn't scratch anything off in terms of other genres. Like doing a jazz record would probably be really cool. Not that that was one of the questions, but just putting it out there. Um, but yeah, right now it's like alt rock vibes all the way. Uh, piano ballads. I still, I love my piano. She's, she's my rock. So uh, she's got to be kind of driving, driving the sound, um, at least in the most recent tracks. So yeah, I'm excited to release that stuff. Check out Listen to the Thunder if you haven't already. Um, the video is pretty cool. I'm, I'm proud of it. Uh, we have some really cool videos coming soon. So soon. I just got a bunch of fans to vote um, for their favorite song out of two tracks. And uh, well, I'm releasing one of them at uh, very soon. Very soon. I don't want to give a date because if it doesn't go the way I plan, then I've just given false information. But very soon, like weeks soon. So that's exciting. Anyways, I'm going to wrap it there. I'd like to toast all the musicians and artists uh, that made it through 2020 in one piece. We made it, guys. And we're still going. And we're still doing what we love. Um, you know, I think it comes down to just being adaptable and yeah you did it i'm gonna shut up because i keep i'm gonna shut up you did it you made it through 2020 congrats that was a bleep show of a year holy crap anyways thank you so much to musicians and bars getting beer for having me i am Dellen gray the musician in a garage studio getting tea thanks for joining me listening to me blab on go off on tangents i hope you learned a little something about me um and i hope you're inclined to uh check out some of my music so find me Dellen gray on all social media d-e-l-y-n-g-r-e-y thank you again to musicians and bars getting beer <laughs>